Hello hello and welcome back to another Stardew Valley video guys. Now if you've been playing Stardew Valley for quite some time, you know that you've definitely heard this question. Who's your favorite choice of husband or wife? Whether it's a bachelor or bachelorette, there always seems to be one person that's missed out and this person can also become your roommate if you choose not to marry someone. So as part of a partner appreciation vibe, here is everything you'll want to know about Corobus so you can get to know him and get to know everything there is to know about him. Corobus is a friendly monster that lives within the depths right under Pelican Town. The sewer is accessible either via the south side of Pelican Town or through the gates of the south side of Sinisat Forest can be unlocked when you hand in 60 different artifacts to the museum. To get yourself 60 artifacts, you'll want to either kill enemies or use your hoe within the Mines and Skull Cavern, use your hoe on artifact spots found outdoors, or fish them up via treasure chests. Gunther will visit you the day after this is done to gift you over a rusty key, which will stay in your character's wallet to unlock the sewers whenever you want. There are a few things that can be done within the sewers, other than meeting up with Krobus, who stays and lives within the sewers. Firstly, you can actually fish at the green water that is here. Not only can basic fishes and items be caught here, including carps, green algae, white algae, and trash, but one of the five legendary fishes can be caught here. No prerequisites are required to fish up this fish, which means you can fish fish him in any season, on any day and have no fishing experience, but there is a 10% chance that you'll encounter him and you can only catch him once per save. This is the same for the radioactive carp which is available via our late game quest over at Ginger Island. Another thing that can be found within the sewers is the Statue of Uncertainty. The dog-like statue sits over on the west side here and can be used to reset any of your skills and the choices you choose at level 5 and level 10 of that selected skill. Trading 10,000 gold to reset a singular skill and when you're going to sleep for the day the options to select your choices for level 5 and 10 again will pop up for you to choose. Finally in this room is our lovely Krobus over to the east side within the sewers. Interacting with him will allow you to talk to him and then you'll be able to access his shop. His shop has permanent items as well as rotating stock depending on the day that you interact with him. As for his permanent stock, here are a few notable mentions you might want to keep in mind. Krobus will have an unlimited number of void eggs to purchase for 5,000 gold each. Although it is very pricey to purchase, this is very useful for late game farms that would like to have more void chickens in their coops. Every day, Krobus will have 10 Void Essence and 10 Solar Essence at 180 gold each respectively. This is a great option to those who craft Mega Bombs frequently, or to someone who needs more of these essences to craft an Iridium Band, which is a very useful ring that becomes available to craft at level 9 of combat. Krobus sells an interesting furniture piece called the Sign of the Vessel. Not only can it be placed as a furniture piece either indoors or outdoors, but the vessel can actually be placed on top of a pond. In doing so, the vessel will actually show you the fish that is within that pond, as well as how many are in there. This is very useful to those that are deciding to have multiple ponds on their farm and want to keep up with how many fish they have in each pond. Krobus will also sell one of the seven star drops that you can find within your game, so save up 20,000 gold to purchase this as quickly as you can from him. Krobus will also sell the recipe for a crystal flooring, which when purchased will appear in your crafting list, and it will take one refined quartz to make five crystal floor pieces. Although it is expensive to craft, this floor piece is actually one of the two floor pieces that can be purchased other than purchasing these recipes from Robin. The other floor piece is actually bought from the dwarf over in the mines in the mountains. This is a small notable mention, but there is a wicked statue recipe that you can purchase from Krobus for a thousand gold, and when purchased will appear in your crafting list. It'll take 25 stone and 5 coal per statue. Although this might just look like a furniture piece that you can place on your farm, this statue is actually the most useful to those with a slime hutch on their farm, as placing a wicked statue within your slime hutch prevents the witch from visiting your farm and turning your slimes into black slimes. And lastly, there's the Return Scepter that can only be bought once from Krobus and is sold for a whopping 2 million gold. It acts like a warp totem and when used any place at any time, will return your character right to the front door of your farmhouse. A quick notable mention, if you're liking today's video, why not help out with the YouTube algorithm and like this video? If you want to see more, why not consider subscribing? And to those that are still interested, my candles are still available. I'll leave the link down below to those that are interested in Fuzzalicious candles. Back at it, it is also important to note the rotating stock that Krobus has because it might be important for your playthrough. On Mondays, 50 slime can be purchased for 10 gold each. 
On Tuesdays, one Omni Geo can be purchased for 300 gold. On Wednesdays, Corvus will randomly sell you a fish or a magnet from a choice of 9 different kinds. And whichever one is chosen, 5 will become available for 200 gold each. On Thursdays, 10 mixed seeds can be purchased for 30 gold each. On Fridays, my favorite choice, which is one Iridium Sprinkler, can be bought for 10,000 gold. On Saturdays, Krobus will randomly have a type of cooked dish out of 50 different kinds. Whichever one is chosen for that day, there will be five available to purchase. The price will depend on that cooked dish. And on Sundays, 10 back wings can be purchased for 30 gold each. There is still one area that I haven't mentioned, which is inaccessible over to the west side of the sewers. This is unlocked after you complete the community center or the Jojima program. I'll try and not give too much away to those who haven't done so yet, but once you've decided to complete one of these options, there is a quest given to you by the wizard over by the train tracks at the north side of the mountains. Starting this quest will allow you to talk to Krobus who will then provide you access to this area which is named the Mutant Bug Lair. At the end of the lair the Dark Talisman can be found which is required for this quest. But this isn't the only thing you can do in the area. Just like within the sewers the water here can actually be used to fish. And you'll have yourself a chance to fish up a carp, slime jack, green algae or white algae. Upon entering this area, you may have noticed that there's quite a lot of mutant grubs and mutant flies in here. Killing them has a chance to drop you bug meat, ancient seeds, dwarf scroll 1 and 4, and white algae. With mutant grubs also having a chance to drop you rice churn to grow on milled rice in spring. You'll also notice there's quite a lot of fiber around in here. These can be harvested with your weapon or a scythe, as the lair is a great way for constant fiber. The fiber will replenish around 40 to 70 of them within here every few days. So if fiber is something that you need for your farm, definitely consider the mutant bug lair. So after everything that we've talked about with the sewers, what about Krobus? Is there anything we can do with him? Oh yes, there is. Well, Krobus is actually a character that you can actually start to date. And the reason for the quotation marks is you can't actually marry him, but once you get to 10 hearts, you can actually ask him to become your roommate. In doing so, we'll actually get him to move into your house, but you actually can't marry any other bachelor or bachelorette. If you want to consider Krobus as a roommate, you may want to consider some of his love gifts to give to him. This will include diamonds, iridium bars, pumpkins, void eggs, void mayonnaise, and wild horse radishes which are random forageables in spring. Once you've reached 10 hearts with Krobus, instead of gifting him a mermaid pendant to make it official, you'll actually need to head over to the desert trader over at Calico Desert and trade in 200 void essences for a void ghost pendant, or it can be randomly dropped by enemies within the skull cavern. The void ghost pendant will only be available when raising your heart with Krobus, and this can only be used on him. There's actually no other use for them. Let me know what you think of today's video guys. Do take care of yourself. Until next time, take care.